Hi guys, it's Jeanette Vilga. And in the background, you're going to hear my husband working on the kitchen. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Um, but got, it has to get done, right? So I'm, I'm very proud of the work that he's done. So I'm very happy. Um, we're going to continue on our series looking at building a junk journal using the gorgeous papers, Titanic by Relative History. And today, what we're going to do is look at, got this signature. So let me quickly flip through this. I have one of the pages that, let me pull that out and show you. There's the complete page. And I just scored so that it was, you know, as much in between the boat and the word as I could get to fold it. This page is actually a index from a atlas. So, you know, you've got names of cities and whatnot, then where you can find them on the maps. So I kind of like, I mean, you look at it, you wouldn't necessarily know that that's what that is, but it's really good thick paper. It's got that aged look, so I really love it. So I like to use it whenever I have something where I'm using a lot of my um, atlas pages. I like to have these pages in there as well. Got some music because like I said, my, the one thing I always think of with Titanic is them playing the music um, as it was sinking. And then page of the, this one was watercolor dyed. Um, just a pan of water, some watercolor, um, the tubes of watercolor paint. And then, and then just dipped it in and then dried it in the oven. And you can see this is one of those that I've, ex, you know, used the A4 page vertically with the hinge. So I have a full page. And then this is another page. I think I even have the, I have the whole page here because I actually have this one twice. And no, I don't have it right next to me. But... Um, I cut off the page oop, so that it was, um, I like it so that when it folded, I have this really nice little bit here that can be used. I kind of like that. So that's the full. And then of course, then there's the rest of the page with somewhere else in the book. And then this is from a sheet of art paper. And I got this when ordering some pen nibs and I got a whole bunch of paper with it and it's all fairly old, not brittle, which is nice, but it has a nice aged look to it. So I love it. And it was quite large, so perfect for actually having a full page folded. So. And then the other side of the extended, you know, with the hinge, is an atlas page. And then we have music page, then of course an atlas page, and then we have the back. There. So we are going to work on this front piece here. I have inked around here, and in the background you're hearing... <laughs> the power, sometimes he has to turn off the power to do what he's doing in the kitchen, and so now my chair is making noises, saying, why have you taken off the power? Okay, so this is what we're going to work on, and what I want to do is I kind of, I like, you know, having the short page here, but I, I want to kind of anchor it, so I'm going to use what we talked about in one of our other sessions, I'm going to use an envelope, and this is just uh, old envelope. I recently, eBay is one of my favorite things to get supplies for junk journals. And I like to get, look for really huge lots. And this one had an absolute ton of all sizes of envelopes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor this on this page and then use it to hold down this one. Okay, and what I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a card blank. So, of course, when you 
often when you buy envelope sets, they come with cards. Of course, this envelope did not come with this card, but um, this is one of my card blanks. So I'm going to use this here on this page. This will give me a place to put some images. It will be able to open. I'll have to be able to use these sides. And I think when I put it down, I don't know. I might put it, you know, uh, glue it in a U so then I even have a spot here for another tag. So we'll see what we do. And then I've already made two little discs. And the way I did this was just used a punch and punched out large discs. And a few of them, I like them to be a little thick so that the um, whatever I'm using is thread to um, connect the two, it has enough room. And then you can see on the bottom, I used another punch smaller and punched a bunch of those and glued them all together. So they're nice and thick, both of the same. And then just for pretties, it really doesn't have any function. I put an eyelet in the middle of both. And those are going to go on each of these so that I can tie them together and that's going to hold this page down. And then when it's untied, this will be able to flap open like this. You can put something into the envelope. Place here to write on um, this one. Of course, like I said, this will open up. I have this place and then when this flaps open, I have this area of my envelope and of course everything on this page. So then I'm not going to decorate this part or do anything with this today, but I am down here. I've got these envelope or envelopes. I've got tags. Here's um, grab a couple of, to show you. I've made a few tags using my Manila folder, and then I took a bunch of different kinds of fabrics that match my color palette. Let me grab a couple more that I've made also. They all match my color palette, and. All you have to do to, this is fabric covered manila. All I did was cut the fabric just a little bit bigger than the tag and covered it in glue. And I just used a glue stick. <laughs> you can see it's holding quite well. There's a few spots, but I can um, do a spot check on those and get those nicely glued down as well. But I don't necessarily need to do that because I like to sew mine. If you're not going to sew, yeah, you can just spot check and put some a little bit of glue in there. This is actually the reverse of this fabric. I really liked the back of that fabric. It nicely goes with my color scheme. And then we've got this one that has some neat paisleys on it. And I thought this fabric kind of looks like a storm. So I thought that would be kind of cool to use as well. And what I've done, so this is one that I have just the fabric on and magic of television. I have taken a piece of linen and I just stamped on it. Nothing fancy. It is, let me get it out, just archival ink, Ranger archival ink, any ink really. Um, I'm not going to wet it or anything, so it doesn't, it could be distress ink, it could be stays on if you have that. Um, I like using the alcohol, or the, sorry, the archival ink to do this. And you just stamp, just like normal. It works really nice. And because it's, you know, fabric, it you don't get the crispness of impressions but I think that is what makes it special. So I went around the edging of the bookmark, or sorry, the tag with, um, on my sewing machine, you can see that from the back, and then put down my fabric and went around it again, and then just added, this is actually a doily, or it started its life as a whole doily, and kind of cut out the middle, and I've been using, so then you have the, edging around it and I've been using those pieces. It makes a nice little decoration. And then just added an eyelet using the same um, color of the bread that I used for these little toggles and just added some sorry silk. 
And this is going to go down here at the bottom of my page. And I'm going to glue it in as a pocket so that this is one that I've actually planned in terms of my ephemera. This comes with the Titanic collection. If you buy the entire collection, you get a whole bunch of really cool ephemera. And this is a letter from the Dock Workers Guild Union saying that you aren't going to put out another ship without enough lifeboats and any um, things needed for the safety of the people that doesn't cover everyone on the ship ever again. <laughs> so it's saying we call on the government to insist on adequate life-saving appliances. So that is from this. So I, this is one of the lifeboats. So this page and everything here is going to be devoted to information and pieces about the lifeboat. So this letter is going to go into this pocket here when I've made that. So other than that, let's see. I have for this envelope, I've used a some of the paper from Thoughtful Studios. I want to say this is her Lighthouse kit. Um, I have the correct name down below and the link and everything or, you know, in the description or we'll add it in when we go, however that works out. And let's see, it's just, I don't know if I have the page nearby here. Oh, here. So this is the full page this way, I think. Yeah, that way. And of course I've cut it down to fit on the flap of the envelope and then stitched around as well to give it a little decoration. That's going to go like that. And then for my card blank, I've taken a map piece and just ripped it. I like that look. And that's going to go there. And then I have a typewriter. It is called a Mignon. And it's a German typewriter. a very interesting typewriter. But it's about 100 years old. So about, you know, the, the time frame of the Titanic. So I kind of like the idea of... Um, I wanted, you know, little snippets of facts about the Titanic to add throughout my book. And I thought just, I like the idea of type, you know, instead of putting it on the computer and printing it out, typing it on my printer or printer, my typewriter that's from about the same time frame. So on here, I'm going to pick one of these guys and we're going to add them to there. And then, of course, the rest. So these are all about the lifeboats. Um, and this one, I think, bothers me the most. Only 28 people boarded the first lifeboat, but it had space to carry 65. And it just kind of ticks me off. <laughs> um, so anyways, a bunch of these are specifically, and sorry about that, my printer just decided to say hello, about specifically about the lifeboats to go with the theme of this page. So that is my plan for this. So I'm going to put that together and we'll come back and see how it worked. So pause for a second and we'll be right back. Okay, so I have my page all built. We've got the card base here. And I went ahead and glued the whole piece down. I was thinking of leaving it to be able to put in a um, tag, but I thought it would be better this way. And then here we have our envelope, and that's glued down. And I'll be able to put things into the envelope. And then we have the tag down here, and it's done like a pocket. 
so that we can put our little guy there. Okay, so I'm not going to put him in there yet because the glue is still drying. Don't want to get him glued into there. So the last piece here is to add our little guys here for our tie. Now, what there's two ways that I could have done these little guys. One is to use a brad that goes through the paper, hook the brad back here, and then you can loop. Um, I'm just going to glue them on. It's um, since I made the book, and it's this is this is my book. I know that these are glued on, but I'm going to be using glassy accents, which is a really nice, strong glue. And I'm just putting it on this small disc here in the back. Enough that it will hold it, but not so much, you know, that it's going to seep out around the edge. And I'm just going to eyeball this. I kind of want it in the middle and a little bit over. That looks good. Eh, good enough, right? And down we go. Okay. And I want the matching guy here to line up and about the same distance from the edge. But I am going to go just a little bit more. That looks good. So again, same thing. A little glue on the disc. Enough to hold it down, but not so much that it seeps out too much. Okay, so let's eyeball this guy. And down he goes. Good enough. That looks good, right? So that, I want to make sure I give plenty of time to dry before doing anything with it. Let's see. Yep, not too bad. And I've got this nylon, uh, it's a cord, really nice silky cord. I usually use this for doing kumihimo. And this is what I'm going to use to tie that. And I've chosen this one because it kind of matches the color of the tag. So tie the colors together. So that's what's going to hold those two guys together. And what I typically do is choose one or the other. Um, in this case, it'll probably be this guy. And actually knot it onto. So make a loop. Right? Like this. put it around, tighten the loop, and then tie that into a knot. Make sure you leave enough sticking out so that you can make another knot. And that's why I made it, you know, it's pretty long and this definitely doesn't need to be this long, but I need enough to be able to pull my knot around this side. And then this one will be the one that wraps and goes around. And then I'll just cut off whatever excess there is. So that will be my tie holding those closed. So that is not necessarily the completed page because, of course, I still have, you know, I have places in here that I can add things. Um, this side, all of this space, this guy, something to go in there. But this is the start of my page. The way that I typically go when building a junk journal is, I, if, you know, a page might go, ooh, this is what I want to do with that page and so I build it. I don't necessarily, um, I typically wait until I'm done and then I make all the ephemera. Mostly because I want to make sure that the paper if, that I have, especially um, if it's not something that I'm, um, that I, I can digitally print so that I can, you know, make more of it. If it's a physical paper, I want to make sure that the pages that I'm developing have that paper available to me before I go and make the, you know, tags and ephemera and pieces. So in this case, you know, I knew I wanted, you know, with the lifeboat, I knew I wanted to use this. So I build a piece on the page specifically to this. Let's see. Oh, and my little guy here, the one that I picked was that after striking the iceberg, 60 minutes passed before a lifeboat was finally released, which is just craziness. So, and it looks like, oh, so 
So depending on how that goes together, I did a lousy job actually in lining those up because I didn't have these lined up the way that they would be when they get finally sewn together, but that's okay. I, I don't know. Sometimes I like when things come together and it's just slightly wrong because it really emphasizes the fact that I made this. <laughs> Warts and all, right? All right, so that is this page. We might come back to it, add some pieces to it. Um, as part of the series, I might just do that myself and then I'll show you. Of course, at the end of the series, we'll do a walkthrough and you can see how everything came together. So again, if you have questions, either put them here with the video or you can private message me anytime you want and we'll tackle another piece at another time. Again, go take a look at the Relative History webpage for the Titanic papers. Also, Relative History is the distributor for Thoughtful Studio, which is the paper that I've used here. I'm going to be using um, this paper also. This is the Lifehouse. There's a seaside paper as well, and I'm going to be using those papers throughout the book as well. So you can find a link and the papers, the physical papers on the Relative History site. You can order those there as well. So there we go, and we will come back and do another piece the next time. See you guys later. Bye-bye.